Welcome to Electro Online. In this video and the ones to come, we're starting a new series. We're going to be talking about rigid bodies and systems of forces. So here we want to talk about the difference between external and internal forces. And I like to think about it in relative to a system. So here we have two objects, M1 and M2. They're connected with a string. And so if you pull on M2, there's going to be tension on the string between M1 and M2 so that the tension will cause M1 to move. Now we're going to look at this in various ways. First of all, we're going to draw a free body diagram around the whole system like this. So we want to look at all the forces acting on the system. Now, when we do that, then the tension here becomes an internal force. It's inside the system. So we can ignore that when we talk about the forces external to the whole system. So let's draw the rest of the forces. We also have the force of gravity acting on M1, which would be M1g. We have the force of gravity acting on M2, which is M2g. And of course, these are forces. So we can go ahead and put a vector on that. And then we have the forces that are the table pushing back against M1 and M2. Those are the normal forces. So we, here we can write N1, which is a, a force. And here we can write N2, which is the normal force uh, acting on the second block. So let me go ahead and separate those two a little bit. So you can see that they're not part of the same force. All right, so those are all the forces acting on the whole system. So there's five external forces. You have F pulling on the system, you have M1G, M2G, you have N1 and N2. So there's five external forces. The tension here is not external to the system, it's internal to the system. So when we look at the system as a whole, we can ignore the tension. Now, however, if we now draw a free body diagram around this object right here, only M1, now you can see that F no longer plays a part on M1. It's independent and what's taking over that's what um, I should say, the force that then pulls in M1 is going to be the tension here in the string. So the tension now becomes an external force to M1. So it all depends what you consider here. So T1 is now an external force where it was an internal force here. I don't have to call it T1, I can just simply call it T. We still have M1G, the force of gravity pulling down, and then we have the normal force N1 pushing back. So it's the surface of the table pushing back. So now there are three external forces on M1. There's no internal force at that point. Let's draw a free body diagram around M2. Like so. And look at all the forces acting on M2. Now you can see that tension is again an external force to that portion of the system that we drew a box around. So now we have T pulling in the opposite direction. And I might as well put a vector on it because it's a vector quantity. We have the force pull it pushing to the right. We have M2G, which is the force gravity pulling down. And then we have the normal force N2 pushing back up in that direction. So those would be the external forces on M2. Here are the external forces on M1. And here are the external forces on the system. And notice that the tension becomes an internal force to the system. And we don't have to consider it if we take a look at the system as a whole. So that's the difference between external and internal forces. It's all relative to what portion of the system we're looking at. Or if we're looking at the whole system, any forces that act within the system are simply called internal forces. And that's how we know the difference.